Welcome in everybody to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and this is BP NFL. It's time to look ahead to the best bets for week four in the NFL. And we're still in the early stages, still learning a lot about the teams and certainly a lot to uh, glean from week three. A lot of upsets, a lot of things that maybe we did not see coming, but this time I think we have a good idea of what to expect in week four and how we break it down, of course, is The Undertaker, Andrew Erickson, and Terrell Furman Jr. And of course, for all of you hanging out with us, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, ring that bell till it goes ding, drop your comments below, but of course, use the tools, download the Betting Pros app, sync your sports books for free. Again, the app is on iOS, it's on Android. And it's a great way to not only get the best lines, but to track all your bets on all the different sports books in one spot. You can monitor your performances by sport, by bet type, make you a better better, which is a fun thing to say out loud. You can create custom betting systems and find winning trends and profitable opportunities as well. So get a free trial of Betting Pros Premium right now today by downloading the app and activating your free trial on the upgrade screen. I can't possibly upgrade anymore than my co-hosts here. So we're just going to jump into things here right away. Terrell Furman, let's start with the Steelers. Uh, it's a game that Andrew Erickson and I already jumped on early. In case you missed the Look Ahead show, it's on the YouTube channel. It's on the podcast feed. Go back, listen, and watch. Andrew and I jumped on this one right away, but I want to hear your thoughts as the 3-0 and Steelers bring Justin Fields into town to face the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, and I'm on the same side as you all in that aspect of it's Tomlin. It's a short a short spread. It means a close game, and Tomlin in close games is good money. But I decided for the people, I might as well give out an extra bet, something else that I like, so the people always have extra bets to sweat. So under 40 in this game because – Ah, I think that once we start getting into the 30s of the totals, people start to say, oh, that's kind of low. We need to hop in on the over. We need to be contrarian here. And this is not the spot to do it. In fact, both of these two teams are five and one to the under at this number this season combined. So there's nothing here. Anthony Richardson might pros probably might not be a good quarterback. Like there's a possible <laughs> real situation. And if I know that I can get to the goal line and potentially walk away with zero points because Anthony Richardson wants to lob the ball up and just let anybody go up there and get it, then absolutely I want in on the under in that situation. Justin Fields has struggled to finish drives over the course of the season. I'm not going to hold him from that very, very real criticism that they're having. But it's this defense, TJ Watt, and this defense keeps them in the mm -hmm. game every single time. And I'm 100% going to back that. I don't think it's going to be a lot of points scored. It's 40. I think it's going to be closer to 30. So, yes, I'm all in on the under 40. I don't remember who said it with me. It might have been Bogman. It might have been you, Erickson. Do a lot of shows with a lot of people. But the conversation was, you know, what Anthony Richardson needs is reps. But unfortunately, right now, it's those hard reps where you're just making a ton of mistakes and, and things aren't going well. And it, it's funny because on the other end of this game, you got Justin Fields, who is finally in a situation, it feels like, where things are going in the right way. You see the completion percentage go up. You see, like, every week he seems to get a little bit more confident, uh, a little bit further removed from the PTSD of playing for the Bears. Um, Richardson's so dangerous, Andrew, that any moment he can make a play. But you and I have been on the Steelers since Monday morning. I'm still on the Steelers. Are you still on the Steelers, Andrew? Yeah, because the Steelers are still minus one and a half. It's going to get minus one and a half, right? I thought we started talking yeah. about how this line was going to move to Steelers minus three. And at least the least what I'm seeing is it's not moved yet. It's still minus one and a half. So I still like the value. And this is about being right, not about giving more and more picks. I want to <laughs> be right on this show. So I'm yes. just going to continue to back the Steelers at minus one and a half. Look, talking about how good the Steelers are on the road. 12 and six against the spread in their last 18 road games. Five and four against the spread and the money line on the road since the start of last season. And the one thing that I going back to last year was Shane Steichen and this Colts team. They don't win when they're not favored. They don't. They don't win these games. So when they're the underdog, they lose the game. You look at Colts games. The favorites have won 14 of the Colts last 15 games. So they're not the team that you want to back as an underdog, even though they're playing at home. And going back to Richardson, he leads the NFL in turnover worthy play rate. You know who ranks first in that in terms of the least amount of turnover worthy plays is Justin Fields. So again, it's way easier to not press when you're winning in games and when you're having leads. They don't need 
Justin Fields to be a superhero. But that's what they need with Anthony Richardson right now because their defense can't get off the field and they can't stop anybody, especially the run. So yeah. I look at this matchup and you have the most, the team that wants to run the ball more than anything else against the league's worst run defense with the Colts. So minus one and a half when Justin Fields doesn't even have to do that much and you're putting so much on Anthony Richardson. He has to be Superman in this game for the Colts to win. So I just like the Steelers so much in this spot. I think the line hasn't moved because of the health of the backfield of the Steelers. I mean, I'm just going to put it or out there. Or the offensive why. line. The offensive line yeah, as well. Like, I think it, those yeah. two combinations, and I think there's rightfully so a little bit of panic in the marketplace, but I don't see it being enough where I'm concerned that Tom and the Steelers can't go in there and win this game by a field goal easily. Like, that. that's that's where I'm at with it. So I, I think that's why the line hasn't moved, is the injuries have kept it close enough where people are like, ooh, maybe there's some value here. You know, with, you know, home dogs here, Indianapolis, you know, playmaking ability, all that. But I get that sense. That's where things are at. Terrell, let's get to a big game here between the Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. Now, the Vikings have handled their business in Green Bay the last couple of years. That was with Kirk Cousins, though. Now you're getting Sam Darnold. Uh, and look, they're 3-0. The Packers have done everything you could have asked for them to do with Malik Willis these last couple of weeks. Winning both games. I mean, you can't be happier than Matt LaFleur right now in the way that this team has performed. Uh, they did not crumble under that situation. The road game didn't matter. They showed up. So what's your take on this game here? How do you want to approach it? Because I know you've got it earmarked as one of your favorites of the week. Yeah, the Brian Flores revenge tour is continuing long. We made stops on the revenge tour. It kicked off in Miami a few years ago, and then we delayed, and we delayed, and we delayed. We had a pit stop over in Pittsburgh, and then delayed, delayed, delayed. But now, Houston, gone. Don't worry about them. <laughs> San Fran, get out of here. MVP, yeah, right. I'm going to show you a defense. My scheme is crazy, right? Yeah, I'm going to show you a crazy scheme, all right. Uh, and then, I mean, well, New York was easy. He didn't even have to try there. They, he didn't even have to show up. He didn't, he didn't have to get off the plane <laughs> yeah, at all. So, pretty easy. Yeah. So, why am I thinking he's going to do anything? Di like, Matt LaFleur, if you make Malik Willis look better than C.J. Stroud and Brock Purdy, and I won't even mention the third quarterback's name, against this Vikings defense, then you are you know what? You're the quarterback whisperer. I'll go ahead and anoint you the quarterback whisperer. You did it. But as of right now, Brian Flores got called a bully by Tua and said that he was hurt in Tua's feelings while he was his coach. And now Brian Flores is like, all right. Now I got to prove to the league who I am as a defensive coordinator and put it on every single young rookie. Like he's absolutely, he's got them flustered. CJ Stroud was an amazing quarterback last year and he looked like he didn't even know what mm -hmm. to do against Brian Flores' defense. And a guy who's performed well against the Blitz this year. And what he puts like 67% of the time last week, I think I saw that number. It was yeah. insane. And he still is like, you know what? I don't care. Just going to keep bringing the pressure. And he brought it from a lot of different places, too, which was very cool to see. We bring in Aaron Jones, who wanted to be back here in Green Bay. He wanted to stay in Green Bay. Green Bay didn't want him back. He was forced out. He didn't want to go to to Minnesota. He wanted to stay in Green Bay. I think this is the Aaron Jones revenge game. I think they're going to run the ball really well. Sam Darnold is going to do enough. But that defense is going to steal the show. I think Malik Willis is going to look like who everybody thought Malik Willis was going to look like when he first got to Green Bay. And now, like, I think there's a coach on the other side who has taken players who I, in the beginning of the season, didn't think would make a great defense, but he's coaching up an amazing scheme. This is all about the Vikings' defense for me. I think that the Packers aren't going to be able to move football. The Vikings are going to do enough and get this win in Green Bay. Yeah, I, I like where your head's at, and, and I kind of think the same way. And, look, I'm old enough to remember Brian Flores as a player, and I know what kind of intensity that dude brings. And, you know, I remember him as a assistant on the Patriots. I remember him all the way through, and – I think this is a great opportunity here for him to reestablish himself in that market. I'd like to see him get another look as a head coach because I do think he got a raw deal in Miami. All right, let's get to the next one on our list. Erickson, what do you have as your second pick here uh, for this game that may or may not be played this weekend too? Just want to put that out there depending on the weather of how things are going here. Well, if they don't play, that means they don't score any points. So that means ah, that the under is, that the mm, the under is going to hit. So Tampa mm, Bay, Philadelphia. That's your moment under. of zen, everybody watching the show today. <laughs> Tampa Bay, Philadelphia, under 44 and a half points. I'm following the trends here. Looking at the Eagles, what they've done on the road, their last six road games, gone under the total. Look at their last 12, three and nine towards the over on the road. And Tampa Bay traditionally has been a team that you don't score a lot of points at home. Average fewer than 35 points total at home since the beginning of last year. Two and eight record toward the over. 
So I like the trends pointing to these two teams playing towards the under when you're having the Eagles on the road and the Buccaneers playing at home. The Buccaneers traditionally have a very good red zone defense, so they don't let teams score touchdowns. They don't let them convert when they drive down the field. You also have the Eagles without a lot of their top playmakers. A.J. Brown is probably not going to play in this game. Devontae Smith has a concussion. Lane Johnson has a concussion. We talk about Lane Johnson when he's off on and off the field, the splits, and how good Jalen Hurts is with Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson didn't play much of last week. What happened to the Eagles offense? It wasn't there, right? They didn't, they don't, they're not nearly as efficient when he doesn't play. So again, not so sure exactly when these guys will clear the concussion protocol, but I I just like the under overall in this game. I don't see these two offenses converging in, oh, they're going to be super explosive. Baker Mayfield is taking the highest sack to pressure rate in the NFL. So it's not even his offensive line's fault half the time. It's when he's getting pressured, he's just taking sacks. Sacks kill drives and kill points to score. So I like the under here. Again, what what is, I haven't seen the weather reports, Joe. So can you just- Well, we're talking about in? the hurricane coming in here through, you know, it's supposed to touch down at some point there in the Florida coast area. So it, it all depends on when it hits land, how long it stays and all that stuff. But if I'm the Eagles, I'm begging for this storm because I've got no Devonta Smith. I've got no AJ Brown. I'd rather be inconvenienced later in the year and try to make up this game somehow and see if maybe there's a situation where, you know, the stars align and you play this team later on because I think you're kind of playing with their worst spot. You're playing at your worst health right now. So again, it's it's soon to know about that. A lot of speculation as of us recording this. So just stay on top of things. And that's why you set the line alerts too. Make sure you see how things are moving too because if they are going to push through and the weather is an issue regardless, but it's okay for them to play, that could change the total a little bit too in terms of what that number is you might get so set your line alerts when you're on the bp app for this game if you're in on it this week and while you're at it join our discord bettingpros.com slash chat it's free it's fun matt peralt does an incredible job of wrangling all the madness of everybody in this incredible sports betting community we have and the analysts are on there too to get in touch with you can get free picks from expert handicappers connect with fellow bettors and you can elevate your strategies with insights from the pros plus if you join the nfl podcast group just sync your picks and use the quick pick feature on the betting pros app for a chance to win prizes join the group today again you don't even have to make wagers i keep telling everybody just make picks it doesn't matter if wagering is even legal in your state you can still have fun in the contest weekly prizes monthly prizes are all there Go download the Betting Pros app right now and join the NFL podcast group. And that way you can go and make some picks, have some fun, and win some free stuff. All right, Terrell, let's go to one of the games that's got one of the biggest totals on the week. It's the Arizona Cardinals and the Washington Commanders. Now, this one looks like a fun, wide-open athletic contest. How are you approaching it? Yeah, I'm going ahead, and I'm going to back the – come on now – the Arizona Cardinals. I'm laying three and a half. (laughs) We all watched Monday night, and I think the best part about the doubleheader on Monday night is the staggered start time because after whoever was still watching that Bills and Jags game at that point, kudos to you, by the way, if you were still watching at the end of the game, you came over and you watched Jay and Daniels win that game. And now everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid. I mean, Kool-Aid is at an all-time high. It's a whole pound of sugar in there. Stirred up. They actually took two packets and made like a strawberry lemonade. Instead <laughs> of just doing the one strawberry or just maybe a peach or a lemonade, they, they mixed two together, put all the sugar in it, and stirred it up. It's actually a couple of sugar particles still sitting at the end. They're drinking it. They're all drinking it. And I 100% agree. I get it. He's really, really good. This is a road spot after a big Monday night football win on a short week with Dan Quinn at head coach and Jonathan Gannon. I don't know if you guys remember, but Jonathan Gannon kind of ran through the NFC East last year. I mean, he lost the most important game against my New York football giants uh, and Daniel Jones, of course. But other than that, Eagles went, gave them an L. Cowboys gave them an L with Josh Dobbs. Like, I think this is a very, very good spot where Gannon is going to do what he's done, coach up a really, really good team against the NFC East, a former division that he's been in as a defensive coordinator for the Eagles. And Kyler Murray is going to go out there and give Cliff Kingsbury a piece of his mind. This is your fault, Cliff. This is your fault. We are all in this position because of you, Cliff, because of you. So you know what? I think Kyler Murray is going to show out. I think that defense is going to have a good day. I think commanders roll. Give me the three and a half points for sure. All right, let's uh, stay 
uh, out west a little bit here and let's go with the Chargers and the Kansas City Chiefs uh, spread that we talked about quite a bit. We talked about Andrew on Monday where this line may or may not go depending on the injuries. Uh, I'm anticipating too this might be the time to pounce on some Travis Kelsey props because his all-time stats against the Chargers are all-time great. If there's going to be a breakout game, this is it. And if it's not, then it ain't ever coming. So uh, where are you at currently with this game? How are you approaching it now that you have a little bit more time to marinate on it? I just like the under in this game. I don't think both teams are game planning. Hey, we need to score 30 points. The Chiefs haven't even been close. To, the Chiefs have been a team that has been hitting unders. That's the team that you look at Mahomes and you think, oh man, high flying scoring offense. He ranks dead last in the NFL in average depth of target. He is, I don't want to say it, but he's turned into a check down king, at least through three weeks of this NFL season. That's what he's doing. He's just checking the ball down to Rashi Rice. That, that is the offensive game plan and running the ball with one of their 10 different running backs that they're using, maybe Kareem Hunt this week. So I just like the under overall. The Chargers are 3-0 and towards the under the season. The Chiefs are 2-1 and towards the over. But I, I just don't see the offensive firepower with the Chiefs. Seven of the Chiefs' last 10 games have gone under the total, nine of the last 12 since the start of 2023, the Chiefs have not allowed a team to score 27 points against them. So their defense has been solid. What do we expect from this Chargers offense without their two starting tackles, potentially? I expect Justin Herbert to play in this matchup, but I think it's, hey, let's give the ball to J.K. Dobbins 25 times and hope he rips off a big run. You know, whether that happens or not remains to be seen, but that doesn't tell me or suggest to me that, oh, there's going to be points scored in bunches in this particular matchup. So I really like the under here, even at 40. All right, let's move on to the next bet that the guys have, number four for everybody. Let's talk about the Broncos, Terrell. How are you approaching this game for them here against the New York Jets? Where, look, I'm in on the Jets side of this one, but I want to hear your case for Denver because I think Bo Nix running up against this defense is going to be a little bit of a different day at the offense than what happened last week against Tampa. But you sell me. Sell me on the Broncos side of this game with the points. Well, did you see last week? That's what happens when Sean Payton oh, gets I to saw. they get to when Sean Payton gets to week three and week four, his teams just figure it out. They just figure it out and they go on through the season. And so I think this is another situation where his team went on a road in what was a horrible spot going to Florida, hot weather, road spot for your rookie quarterback, and they absolutely dominated this uh Tampa Bay Bucks team and now we come back we saw what happened on Thursday night and everybody's back on the Jets but I don't think not so fast because this is still the petty bowl this is still the petty bowl between Hackett and Peyton and I think that this is still has a lot more to give last year the Jets got the win 31-21 Hackett got his revenge I think this is Peyton's turn that's another big angle for me I like Peyton at this point in the season I like the uh, fact that the Jets are going to London next week. In fact, teams who, who are on the look ahead to London and laying more than four points are 12 and 18 ATS. So this is a really, really good spot that I think that uh, the defense is really going to be the show here. I seen this Jets team play a really good defense in the San Francisco 49ers. Couldn't move the football. Seen them against the Tennessee Titans. Couldn't move the football. I think here, right here, this Jet, this Broncos defense with Patrick Sertan is going to lock down Garrett Wilson. I'm sitting him this week in fantasy. Hey, the guy that's been Ooh. all talking about Garrett Wilson all offseason for the past two offseasons, I'm sitting him this week because Patrick Sertan is a problem, and I think he's going to be an issue, and I think that they're not going to be effective running the ball the same, and so – I think this is a lower scoring Denver keeps it close game. This is a spot that Sean Payton goes out there and coaches this team to a three point loss. Now, I don't think you should sit Garrett Wilson, but you need to make some adjustments to your lineup because chances are, I do agree. He's going to get, no, nope, uh, I sat him for Deontay banished. Johnson. Uh, well, I mean, if you have Deontay Johnson, like if it's a two wide receiver league, 10 team and you got a lot of depth. Okay. That's cool. No, but I, think most team, of those, I, I just stole Deontay no, Johnson saying, around. Well, here. look, man, I agree. He's going to be banished to the shadow realm this week. I, I do agree with that. I love Braylon Allen props this week too, based on that. I think you're going to see Braylon Allen just continue to work in this offense because you are going to lose Garrett Wilson. You'll get Lazard props. I don't want to say Mike Williams props out loud. I think that's a dangerous thing to say, but Braylon Allen, look for him to continue to be involved in that offense. I'd be looking for him. Let's continue on here. Andrew Erickson. Let's talk about a huge marquee matchup, the Ravens and the bills. So the Ravens got their W on the road against Dallas, the three and O bills and MVP leader, Josh Allen come to town. What are your thoughts on this contest? Underdog Josh Allen, sign me up. 
It worked in week two against the Miami Dolphins. I'm going to go right back to it. Josh Allen, 18, nine and two against the spread as an underdog, 65%. Lamar Jackson as a favorite, 48% against the spread. I, he, who's the MVP, right? Three weeks in. That's the guy. No, His Josh team Allen. is the underdog is. here. I, I don't really care that they're playing in Baltimore. Balt- Home field advantage seems to be a lot, is overrated in my opinion. Again, I get understand where the line is coming from, but do you think Josh Allen is, oh no, we're going into this hostile environment against this Baltimore Ravens defense that almost gave up the win to the Dallas Cowboys last week. They didn't shut them out. W- what happened? They, you know, so I think that the Bills here for me, Baltimore, Look, this is what they do a lot of the time, especially when they play at home. Again, 11 and 5 on the money line as home favorites, 6 and 11 against the spread as home favorites. They keep, they don't set the expectations when they play at home a lot of the times. So I just love Josh Allen here as a road underdog. Again, talked about how it worked in week two, not how I thought it was going to work out against Miami, but even before the two injury, the Bills were going to win that game. So I felt very confident about that. So I'm just going right back to Josh Allen, the MVP front runner as an underdog. All right, there you go. All right. Before we get to the upset special of the week, finally got one last week. Ring the bell. Let's get to the last pick of the guys. Uh, let's start with Bengals and Panthers here for you, Terrell, because, man, Bengals back up against the wall would be mm-hmm. the understatement of the century. And the Panthers playing fast and loose with the red rifle. So who comes up here? What's your approach to this game? So sometimes when you come out here and you give a bad pick like Bengals laying seven, uh, you have to go back to the drawing board and you have to really look inward, a lot of inward looking into yourself about what did I do wrong in that pick? Because the Bengals weren't in that game to ever be laying seven. And I realized I should have just faded the defense and took the over, man. What in the world? Like, come on. This is the red rifle in his revenge game in Charlotte. Of course, I need to find a way to back the red rifle and I don't want to take the passers. So I'm going to expect them to score points. (laughs) And even if they don't score points, there's a possibility that Joe Burrow is really, really pissed off and scores close to 40. (laughs) <laughs> on this Panthers defense. So I feel pretty safe either way, whether this is a blowout by the Bengals or whether the red rifle comes in here and says, I'm about to put two, three touchdowns on your head, Cincinnati, because I didn't like how things ended up. He's been talking all week. And when Bryce got benched, he said, Hey, I remember when I got benched in Cincinnati and I didn't like it. And so I'm just trying to coach him up like that. That's been heavy on the mind recently. He's been taken back and he's been triggered to that place when he got benched in Cincinnati. And now all those emotions are coming back when he's got Cincinnati at home this week. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Look, man, absolutely over. I, over I think the over, total's over. the right total's the right way. Uh, but man, you know, trying to look for the Bengals to figure things out here with that defense. It's just been so bad. It's it's tough. It's real. I mean, everything in my soul says well, the Bengals have to win this football game, but but the way that defense is played, I don't know if we can get there. Good luck, yeah. They they uh, literally killed survivor entries three of the four weeks of this. That's true. <laughs> Two of the three. Single-handedly. Single-handedly killing, killing, killing survivor entries. No, nobody's going to want to play survivor anymore. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, fun. I couldn't imagine taking the Bengals ever in survivor again. Like, to be honest, those two games, like, might have quite – now, granted, I did pick the bats in that game. Still, those two games might have quite possibly ruined the Bengals ever going in survivor for me. Like, ever. Fair enough. All right. Uh, let's get after your last one here. Another big matchup, the Seahawks and the Lions. We keep saying every week, I can't wait to see the Seahawks really tested. And then we thought maybe last week that would happen with the Dolphins. We were wrong. It did not happen. Uh, Dolphins just did not Horribly take wrong. care of enough. Horribly wrong. And I'll tell you what, I'll take the L on this one too, but the defense is just so bad there. I mean, they, they just got to figure out. They can't stop anybody. But it's funny, Andrew, I'm on the Seattle side of this game. We talked about this one on Monday. I'm not sure where you're at on it. I was very gung-ho Seattle here because Detroit so far to me has been just a little sluggish with all these expectations so far. Where do you stand as now we're coming to the end of the week as we're evaluating things? Expectations. Talk about expectations. expectations. Seattle's one and two against the spread despite facing Bo Nix, the Patriots, who they had to beat in overtime. And who did they put last week? Oh, yeah, Skylar Thompson and the Miami Dolphins. If you got the closing line, the, they actually Where they did cover tied. the spread. They actually so, yeah, pushed one of those if he got the closing line. So, <laughs> Eric, you have a point here. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it, point they, is taken. they have hardly faced a juggernaut schedule to become three and zero at this point. And I think that this is the classic case of, hey, this team are they for real? This is their test game. And then what happens? They get curb stomped when they play a team that had Super Bowl aspirations entering this season. I still think the Lions are the cream of the crop when it comes to the NFC. I know things have been a little bit bumpy for to start the year, but I just think 
Dan Campbell is going to get his guys going. Mike McDonald in this defense has not been tested. I, I just really don't think they've been tested by any offense yet this season because of the teams that they have played. The Lions have so many ways that they can beat you, even if they don't have Sam Laporta. They can beat you with the run. They can beat you with the pass. They have great pass protection for Jared Goff. Playing at home, I I just love the Lions in this spot to, to really have a dominant win and put the NFC on notice and make people think twice about, hey, how good is Seattle actually? I think we're going to have a lot of takeaways after Monday Night Team. I, it sucks because it's on Monday. We don't get to talk about it on the Look Ahead show. Yeah, that's true. Any concern? Can- because... And this is so funny because these teams are not in the same division. They played in Detroit the past two seasons, and Detroit has lost both games. Is there any like I, I mean, I'm trying to play devil's advocate. Bro, and I'm, I'm on saying, Seattle, so you don't have yeah, to Yeah, they've don't lost have to, you know, the they've lost both me. games. Like and we're laying three and a half here. It just what if what if the Lions win by three? Look, what man, if this is all a I shootout? Can, all I can tell you is this is definitely one of those games where it's range of outcomes. <laughs> And so far, what I'm learning about this season is one thing, which is whenever you see something like this, where it seems like, yes, this is a game where the Lions should handle their business and take care of stuff here. They are theoretically the better football team. They have all the right pieces, all that stuff. So far, those situations have been very dicey this year. So I'm just going to go with the early September trend. If this was November, I might feel differently about that game. But because I think people are still learning who Seattle is, it's weird. It's almost giving the Seahawks an advantage where their little bit of unknown identity is still kind of creeping up on people. And I don't know because of every, everything that Erickson point out there, if we're at a point where people are, well, there's like, well, Seahawks, yeah, they beat the Patriots. Yeah. They beat the Broncos. Who, who cares? And, and I think that's dangerous. And if the lions are doing that, I think they might get in a bad spot this week. We'll see. Should be a good time. Once again, we'll come here and we'll own the W's and own all the L's. I want to talk about upset specials. That's what I want to talk about. And whenever I see a a team on the road that's an underdog that has the better coach and the better quarterback, well, my ears perk up. And this week, it's the Rams, plus 140 on the money line against the Bears. Look, I'm not sold on the Bears at home. Uh, I understand that people want to make some arguments about Caleb Williams maybe starting to play a little better, all that, whatever, that's fine. Bears defense has some moments. Okay, yeah, sure, that's cute. But we're talking about a Rams team that somehow rallied around Matthew Stafford and beat the San Francisco 49ers in a building that was a sea of red populated with 49er fans everywhere. Hey, it was basically I a road game. Eight for them. so much crap in the comments for the Rams pick. Oh man. He did. Oh but, man. I just hope but here that we go. the the apology is as loud as the disrespect was. Nobody had faith in the close your eyes special. Nobody. So if you closed your eyes and you listened to Terrell, you did it. And it was certainly a close your eyes special situation. Let me tell you, it was definitely that feeling. And I just don't get this. I just think the line is wrong. It's just straight up wrong here. I don't know why. Look, I get it. No Puka, no Cooper Cup. I get all those things. But we're talking about what's the definition of advantage? Better quarterback, better head coach. And that goes completely to the side of the Rams in this one. Give me the Rams to, again, find a way to win. Maybe it's another late comeback, but I just think they've got it in them. So that's my upset special. Give me the Rams this week. And the parlay of the week. Let's take those Rams wherever we can get them on the money line. And let's go ahead and add them to the Pittsburgh Steelers, where the boys and I are all at with that minus one and a half. And... Give me the Baltimore Ravens on the money line because I'm just going to troll Andrew Erickson. You put those three things together, you get plus 626 right now. So that's a great way of taking a look at the week. Uh, and if you want to take a look at what we're in on, a great way to do that is to follow us at bettingpros.com slash Joe slash Terrell and slash Erickson. That's the way to go. Uh, I think I was 7-1 and one last week. Not bad, but I got to keep the ball rolling. We got to keep going here. So see what we're in on. Download the app. Follow us. And use the premium. Again, you're getting the upgrade for free. If you haven't used it, go ahead, give it a try, and start betting smarter, not harder. And don't forget to subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel. Ring the bell to let go ding. And comment below what's your favorite bet of week four in the NFL. We want to hear from you. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Terrell and Andrew, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.